Last week, Valiant's wide receiver Jim Smith and quarterback Cliff Staff found plenty of open territory in the Los Angeles Express secondary. On the day, Smith, the USFL's all-time leading receiver, grabbed eight aerials for 185 yards. Stout tied a USFL record with five touchdown passes, three of those to Smith. On the afternoon, Stout completed 18 of 23 for 280 yards. Not to be outdone by Stout and Smith was Stallion's defensive back Chuck Clanton. Clanton set a USFL record when he intercepted his 13th pass of the season, breaking Luther Bradley's record, which was established back in 1983. This evening, Clanton and his defensive mates will be tested by Orlando's multi-talented quarterback, Reggie Collier. This season, the former number one pick of the Stallions has emerged as a quality passer, completing over 52% of his attempts for nearly 1,700 yards on the season. Equally dangerous as a runner, Reggie has rushed for over 400 yards and has a club-high 10 rushing touchdowns. Tonight, Reggie Collier returns to Birmingham, the birthplace of his professional career, as the Renegades meet the Stallions next on ESPN. Welcome to Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama for tonight's game between the Birmingham Stallions and the Orlando Renegades. Second meeting of the year between these two teams. First time around, the Stallions picked up an impressive 34-10 win. And with a victory tonight against Orlando, the Stallions would solidify first place in the Eastern Conference ahead of New Jersey and Tampa Bay. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger Twibel along with Mike Hafner. Nice to be back with you on Monday night. Last week, Cliff Stout tied a USFL record, five touchdown passes. And I don't know if Birmingham has played any better on offense and defense in one game all year. I don't think they have either and I'm certain that coach Raleigh Dutch is very happy that his offense has found its stride. Three out of the last four games against teams that are contending for playoff spots and I've got a feeling that he's very happy the offense has found its stride. The number one ranked team in the United States Football League on defense is the Birmingham Stallions. They have allowed just one touchdown in the last two games but how do they stop Reggie Collier, a quarterback who just gets better and better every week? You know he didn't play but until the second half in that opening 34-10 loss to Birmingham him, but he's gotten to be a lot better quarterback over the last 11 games, and uh, I've got a feeling that they're going to see a much improved youngster at quarterback tonight than they did at the beginning of the season. Look forward to your comments tonight, Mike. Nice to be back with you here on Monday Night on ESPN. Brockhouse getting set to kick it off. Jeff Brockhouse, number five, out of the University of Missouri, a school where Raleigh Dodge used to coach as an assistant at one time. And back deep, Paul Ott Carruth, number 42, and also back for the Birmingham Stallions, number 80, Thad McFadden. We're set to go. Hope you've had a very good Memorial Day weekend as Carruth will move up at the 10-yard line. Makes a stop, and he is brought down. 31 in on the tackle, and that's Lonnie Johnson, a running back who has just been activated. And Cliff Stout will bring his team out to start things off and get him going for Birmingham here tonight. Offensively, Joel Coles, 35, and Joe Cribbs, 20, the running backs. Joey Jones, 4, Jim Smith, 86, the wide receivers. Daryl Mason, 81, is a tight end. Pat Phoenix, 71, the right tackle. Pat Sandin, 74, the right guard. Mark Battaglia, the center, 59. Buddy Idolette, 78, the left guard. And Phil McKinley, 73, the left tackle. First and 10. That's Coles right up the middle. He gets across the 20 to the 22-yard line. And let's set the defense now for the Orlando Renegades. The right end is Scott Hutchison, 66 out of Florida. James Scott, 77, the right tackle. Ehrman did start, and they bring Scott in on the second play. David Graham, 68. Kevin Killen, 94, the people up front. Linebackers, Atkins, 55. Keep an eye on Freeman, 56, and Randolph, 59. The corners are Elbert Gray, 22. Jeff George, 43. Lupe Sanchez, 21. And Victor Jackson, 20, the safeties. Second down and seven. And this is Joe Cribs. Right side, he's got a hole. 
across the 25 to the 26-yard line. James Scott, 77, moves over to make the tackle. As you take a look at Joe Cribs, Mike, his longest run from scrimmage this year, 19 yards, and he's only been over 100 yards in one game. And Raleigh Dodge mentioned that when we talked to him yesterday when we had our meeting, and he said, one, the reason is my offensive line hasn't been working together because they've been hurt all year. He said, I got one guy out, then one in. You know how important the teamwork is. But I'll tell you what Joe does. He puts into defense in such a sweat. Do we play him for the run or do we play him for the pass? And that really helps Cliff open up the rest of the field. Short yardage situation. Third down and one. Chris. He's got the first down. James Scott, once again, 77, first-year man from Clemson, makes the tackle. We mentioned Joe Ehrman starts. That's out of respect to the 13-year veteran from Syracuse. Then they bring Scott, 77, into the game. Anybody that's 35 years old that can make it on the field oh. deserves to start, just, right? Just to make it up to the broadcast booth sometimes at 35 <laughs> to be a chore. <laughs> First down. For the Birmingham Stallions, they have been a very, very solid football team the last couple of weeks with a shutout victory against the Portland Breakers here and a very impressive win in Los Angeles where this man Cliff Stout got him on the scoreboard in their first five offensive possessions. Plenty of time for Stout. Plenty of time. He's got Smith. Smith at the 35-yard line. Freeman, 56, comes over to lend a hand to Albert Gray. And Jim Smith, the veteran, out of Michigan. And Jimmy Smith is probably the best pattern runner in maybe all of football, let alone the USFL. And if you give Cliff Stout the kind of time you just saw him get, Smith's going to get open all day. The Orlando Renegades will put it in play first and 10 from the 21-yard line. We're just underway. Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. We'll set the Renegades for you offensively in just a moment. That's Flowers in motion. Collier. Got his man down at the 15-yard line, and it's Jackie Flowers, the third-year man from Florida State. Let's set him for you offensively. We'll tell you that Curtis Bledsoe is not playing tonight, and Richard Crump and Leon Perry are the running backs. Flowers, 84. Joey Walters, 17, the wideouts. Bob Nazola, 89, the tight end. Joel Patton, 69, the right tackle. Ed Fulton, 64, the right guard. Durger, 70, is the center. Tom Dornbrook, 63. And Ed Moransky, 72, the left side of the offensive line for Orlando. On second down and three, call it the 14-yard line. Crump. Down to the 11, and Rowe was right there. Bill Rowe, fifth-year linebacker from Colorado, and we'll set the number one defense in the United States Football League for you right now. Mike Perko, 69, Doug Smith, 97, Jackie Klein, 98, and the veteran Dave Purifori out of Eastern Michigan, 75 up front. The linebackers, Herb Spencer, 55, Bill Rowe, 52, and Ken Kelly, 56. The corners, David Evans, 26, Dennis Woodbury, 21. The safeties, David Dumars, 22, and the man that leads the United States Football League in interceptions, 24, Chuck Clinton. First down for Orlando. First and 10 now, the ball at the 11-yard line. Trump is the lone setback. Collier got room to run. Inside the five to the four-yard line. And David Evans, 26, and Ken Kelly, 56. And that is something that Lee Corso maybe is a little apprehensive about. Collier's got a very tender knee. Yes, he does. But uh, also, you want to win football games. And Reggie Collier's dimension, while he is a growing as a thrower and a leader and a reader of defenses, is this great athletic ability. Now watch. You've got two guys that ought to nail him, and he breaks the tackle for both of them and gets four or five extra yards. With Bledsoe out of the game, he is the leading rusher for the Orlando Renegades. Second down and three, and Collier wants a timeout. Some confusion. Roger Twivel, Mike After, back with you. Is that our uh, producer there? No, that's not our oh. producer. He's in the truck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Second down and three after the timeout by Orlando. That's Walters in motion. That's Leon Perry. Touchdown, Orlando. Leon Perry, a former Birmingham Stallion, who was sent down to Orlando. Comes up with the touchdown, his third of the year. And why not for the former Birmingham Stallion? They say he's gained a few extra pounds since he's come over from Birmingham. But I'll tell you what, when you're a fullback, you can use the extra poundage when you get inside the five-yard line. He ran right over the defensive back. Another look. And again, that powerful legs. Look at his size. 
Oh, and he runs right over. He showed you enough speed to get David to the Evans. outside as he went over Evans. And Brockhouse will come in to attempt the point after. Kick is down and good, and Orlando has quieted the crowd here at Legion Field in Birmingham. They have a 7-0 lead. But they made the turnover into six. They kicked it short, McFadden on the run at the 15-yard line. Bad McFadden across the 30 to the 33-yard line. It's a pretty good field position coming up for the Birmingham Stallions. Down on the tackle, those linebackers for Orlando. Fred McAllister, 53, and Ed Jackson, number 50. Stout will lead them out. We mentioned that last week they scored on their first five possessions. That was a team record. That won't happen this week. Absolutely won't happen this week. Now you put Cliff Stout into a little bit of sweat. He's down seven. Now you take away the, I don't know if they're going to run, I don't know if they're going to throw. You know they're behind, and they're going to want to catch up early, so the defense now has the end. This is a quarterback, and it's very important he gets off to a good start. Oh, he's yeah. very hard on himself. He gets down on himself, and things don't go well early on. And he can also run with the football. We don't talk about it a lot. He's still on his feet, across the 40, to the 43-yard line. And I'll tell you that Cliff Stout, as a runner, does a pretty darn good job. Four touchdowns on the ground this year and averaging almost six yards a carry. We don't hear a lot about it, but he can run with it. He's a good athlete. Yes, he's an outstanding athlete, Roger. And he also reads well on the run, and that's why he's a good runner. There's always the threat that he'll throw the football until he gets to the line of scrimmage. And just by the way, he keeps his balance here. You know that he's an outstanding athlete. He did step out at about the 39-yard uh, line, but an excellent tightrope walker. 6 4 two, 15 from Youngstown State. Second down and three for Birmingham. And Joe Cribbs is the ball carrier. Cribbs across the 40 to the 41-yard line. He'll be a, just a bit short. Joe Cribbs has not had the year that a lot of people expected him to have. We told you about some injuries to the offensive line. That has affected him. He was the USFL rushing champion a year ago. That's not going to happen this year. He is shooting for 1,000 yards. He's got 854, but he's only been over the 100-yard mark once so far this year. But like Gary Anderson at Tampa Bay, he can do so many other things for you. He uh, is great as just a decoy. He's an outstanding receiver out of the backfield, and he will get you the tough yards inside. Third down and two for the Stallions. 7.38 to go, first quarter. Cribs again. Good hold that time. Cribs inside the 45 to the 43-yard line and gives Sandin 74, Phoenix 71, and Buddy Idolette pulling out credit on that offensive line because he had all sorts of room right there. Right side of the offensive line, 71, Phoenix, 74, Sandin, blow their guys out of the way, but the key is Buddy Idolette coming down. He comes back to the outside, kicks him outside, and that's what I mean about Joe Cripps being a tough runner. Take a look there. You can see it graphically now. 71, 74 with the straight-ahead blocks, and you see the lead block and then Idolette through, and uh, Joe bounces off a couple of people and a lot of great backs don't do that. Here he goes again after the 16-yard pickup for the first down. He gets it around the 40-yard line. Atkins, 55, one of the linebackers there. Also, David Graham, 68 up front. Joe Cripps came from the National Football League, celebrated signing for this franchise. Then he had a holdout last year, missed a couple of games, wanted to renegotiate. That seems to be the favorite word of professional athletes these days. Renegotiate. Well, he's happy now, and that's a key. From Auburn. He backs out of there, huh? Just a couple. They've got a couple still there, yes. Second and eight. Mason, the tight end's wide open, and Stout overthrows him. Mason came off the line of scrimmage wide open. Lupe Sanchez was late to get over and cover. And Mason is only 6'1". He's not that classic 6'5", 6'6", tight end. But Raleigh Dodge likes him because he's a great blocker. And that, that, that just tells you Raleigh's an old offensive line coach. Right? Absolutely. He said the scouts came in and said, hey, this guy can't play. 6'1", 215. He said Mason can't play. And Raleigh Dodge gave him three sets of films. The guy came back and said, yeah, he's a heck of a blocker. You remember a tight end for Miami about that size that played a long time? Sure. And didn't do badly either. Jim Mandich. Jim Mandich. About that size, huh? Third down and eight. Three wideouts. Toller checks into the game. Joey Jones, the reception. First down at the 27-yard line. That time, Joey Jones turned Albert Gray into a pirouette. 
Joey Jones is the speed receiver in this offense. We talked about Jim Smith and his precision patterns. Stout gets, again, time. Cornerback has to play Joey Jones for his speed. And he runs the quick comeback, and you see how wide open he is. Makes a nice catch, too. Holding. Defense from 58. Penalty is declined. First down. Defensive holding on number 58, Bernard West. Birmingham will decline it. They'll take the ball at the 27-yard line, and they've got it first and 10. The Orlando Renegades, who rank last in the United States Football League defensively. And by the way, offensively, too. You had to remind everybody, right? It's a fact. It's a truth. First and 10, Birmingham. Under six minutes left to go. First quarter, Cribs and Coles, the setbacks. Cribs. Joe Cripps inside the 20. Down to the 17-yard line. Buddy Adelette once again with a good block is Victor Jackson, who's made over 80 tackles this year, has to come up and make the stop. This is the classic Pittsburgh Steeler off-tackle trap play. And watch 78 on the lead block. You'll be able to see him just in the front there, Buddy Adelette. And he makes the extra yardage for Cripps. Cripps right on his tail until he makes his block and then cuts up and gets four or five more. Raleigh told us this afternoon that he wanted Joe to have a big night today. Or to really try to establish something running the football. Only once this year has Birmingham been over 200 yards rushing the ball in a single game. Cripps up the middle that time inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Tackle made by 56, Ron Freeman, who has made over 100 tackles. He's been a very busy man. Freeman and Jackson, linebacker, if you secondary, making all the stops. If you'd close your eyes, you'd know who'd make the tackle on a running play for Orlando. 56, Freeman, the middle linebacker, is everywhere, and he's got to be. He's the key to the defense, and if he's not there, they're in trouble. From Kansas State College at Pittsburgh, or Pittsburgh State, not to be confused with Pitt. Yes. First and 10. Birmingham driving now. Coles stumbles. He tripped over Cribs in the backfield. Got inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line. Victor Jackson was busting up through there. Coles is an interesting story. Was a blocking back at Penn State for Kurt Warner. But there have been a lot of blocking backs out of Penn State that have turned into pretty good running backs once they've had the chance yeah, to carry in the pros. A uh, guy named Harris yeah. at Pittsburgh, I think. I think, I think it was Franco. <laughs> They also blocked for John Williams, too. Yes. Uh, he got two pretty good running backs. Second down to nine, seven nothing. Orlando with the lead. Under four minutes to go, first quarter. All day for Stout. Jones was open momentarily. Back on the coverage was Albert Gray. I'll tell you, Stout has just had all day to throw the football. He's got excellent protection and well, against the Los Angeles Express, as a team not playing well, but some great individual athletes, you saw what Stout did in the first half. He had four of those five touchdown passes. Doesn't make any difference who you're playing against. When you're 14 out of 15 and four touchdown passes, you get a pretty good half. Stout, in his 30 games in the United States Football League, 52 touchdown passes and 21 interceptions, faces a third and nine now. Oh, a blitz was coming. It was picked up. Touchdown, Smith! The old connection, Cliff Stout to Jim Smith. And I gotta tell you what, Freeman was busting up the middle and we're gonna find out who made a touchdown saving block. And they don't give points for that, but the coaches appreciate it. Here comes the blitz. Was it Cribs? Yeah. And Cribs made the block. Outstanding job by Cribs. And that'll pay your salary for a whole football game. Just one block like that picking up the blitz. 14 touchdown reception of the year for Smith. And for Cliff Stout, touchdown pass number 27. Point after. Miller's on. And he's got it. All you need is time in the blitz situation because Jimmy Smith can beat anyone on a one-on-one -on -one route. And he did it right there for the touchdown. As we showed you in the original replay, though, it was Joe Cribbs who picked up the blitz to allow Smith to run his corner out. So he gets paid not only for running the football, but doing a good job blocking, which you saw right there. All tied up at 7. 3.25 to go. First quarter. Orlando with it. First and 10 for the 19-yard line. Just simply falls down. Might have got his feet tied up with one of the offensive linemen. Looked like it was going to be a running play. Maybe a guard pulling across. Could center blocking down. Could have been the lead blocker, too. The fullback who tripped him on the back of the ankles and brought him down. 
Reggie Collier, as we mentioned at the top of the show, the first draft selection ever by the Birmingham Stallions, and we talked to Raleigh Dots today. Raleigh saw him destroy Alabama in a game here while at Southern Miss, and he wanted him. Feldy had a great future, but when Cliff Stout became available, they had to go for the win. It was a matter of do you win now or are you three years from now? Second and four, Trump tries to go outside. Oh, great defensive job by David Evans. Really strung it out very well. Penalty markers down on the play. Penalty markers down. And usually when those wide receivers have to block, Mike, they get into some trouble out there. Jackie Flowers didn't want to do it, but he leaned right on the back. David Evans Offense on the stop. 84. The penalty against Orlando. There's a look at Jackie Flowers, wide receiver from Florida State. Now, is this how you used to block? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the way I used to block. You see him right in the middle of his back. And that's... You know, he tried not to do it. You see him get his hands out of the way. Hey, I'm not going to be effective. The problem was... He hit him right in the back first. Well, they've got a long way to go, and there is the pacing Lee Corso. He doesn't stop. He'll wear out this artificial surface on the Orlando side of the field before the game's over. Third down and 21. Ball is on the eight-yard line. Draw play. That's Ricky Clatt. He's across the 20 to the 22, and David Evans and Mickey Sutton. Look at Greg Cater, the leading punter in the Eastern Conference. And Raleigh Dodge fears more than anything else the special teams play of the Orlando Renegades. On the Cater punts, averaging just four yards of return, very high spiraling kick, McFadden at the 40, and no return there, but good field position for the Birmingham Stock. Roger Twybell, Mike After back with you at Legion Field, 134 to go in the first quarter. Orlando and Birmingham tied up at seven. Stallions have it first and 10 from the 41-yard line, and so far this year, Mike, they've outscored their opposition 126 in the first quarter, so they've jumped on people in a hurry. And if they keep picking up blitzes like they have been, it could get worse. Cribs. Cribs across midfield. Cribs inside the 35 with the 31-yard line. That should be the longest run of the year for Joe Cribs. It was 19 yards coming into this game. And let's take a look at the hole that he got here. A little bit of a delay, Mike. Well, he makes a great move. Watch the side step and then get to the outside. And as Raleigh Dodd said, he wanted Joe Cribs to have a big night. 28 yards. And again, Buddy Idolette on the great crackback block, too. That was Bataglia, too, inside. Yes. Moving some people out. So the longest run of the year so far for Joe Cribs, 28 yards. And look at the night he is off to. Eight carries, 68 yards. Birmingham has it first and 10 at the 30 of Orlando. Looking for Joey Jones. Got him. Jones, well, I think I'll go back to where I initially started at the 16-yard line. He's quick as a water bag, isn't he? One of the problems with speed, though, is you want to get a chance to use it, and a lot of times you only get back to where you started from using all that good it's, ex it's exciting when he does it, right? Sure. It's exciting. We've come down to the end of the first quarter at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Stallions on the move. It's all tied up. Orlando 7 and Birmingham 7. Start second quarter action from Legion Field. Cliff Stout, four of seven for 47 yards and a touchdown. They've got it first and ten from the 15-yard line. Stout with the rollout. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Good job there by Harold Randolph, 59 from East Carolina. Didn't bite at all. One of the things you do is hope when you run the bootleg that you fool the outside linebacker and he doesn't stay at home, that he chases the back. Buddy Idle at 78 pulling. There goes the back on the sweep and you hope the linebacker chases. Uh-oh. Harold Randolph didn't fall for the bait, and Stout goes, my goodness, I'm going to have to hit the turf. So Cliff, who's rushed for over 300 yards so far this year, has the average brought down a little bit there. Still averaging almost six yards a carry. I know why they call it a naked bootleg. That's right. You're in deep trouble if they don't fall for it. Second and ten. Stout. Well, he's going to run it now. He gets down to the 15-yard line, back to the line of scrimmage. 53, Fred McAllister, second-year man from Florida. And once again, plenty of time. Mike was looking for Jim Smith. Pretty good protection in that secondary by Orlando. 
man-to-man -man coverage straight across the board. Smith couldn't get open. That's who he was looking for. And I, I've got a feeling that if, that if Jim Smith doesn't get open, the rest of the receivers kind of take a breather because they know Jim gets open so well. Game's all tied up at seven, and in the first quarter, look at Birmingham, 113 to 23 in total yards, but the turnover, and Orlando took advantage of it. And that's the deceiving part of it. They got pretty good field position and got right in the end zone off that turnover. Three wide receivers as Ken Toller checks into the game, both Jones and Smith to the near side. Lone setback is Coles. Third down and 10. Scott's nailed, but he gets rid of it. And Mason can't hold on to it. Mason could not hold on to it as 74, Joe Ehrman, the veteran from Syracuse who plays primarily now on passing situations, came in and really knocked Stout for a loop. He had to hurry it because he could feel him coming from the backside, and you'll see that's the toughest catch in football. When they throw it behind you right at the inside shoulder, it's tough to turn around, adjust your body, make the catch. It wasn't Darrell's fault. It was that the great pressure from Ehrman made him throw it quickly. Danny Miller will check into the game. A field goal to tap now as they'll set it down at the 23-yard line, making a 33-yard attempt out of the hold of Bob Lane. He's four out of seven in that area this year. And he got that one dead solid perfect. Danny Miller, 10-7. Stallions with the lead. Miller the man that got him the three points. And they're trying to kick it away from Parrish, who is the leading kick returner in the USFL. They do it again, and that is Lonnie Johnson. Johnson stuck right at the 12-yard line. 43 for the Stallions. That's Fletcher Llewellyn. Roger, you can't start at the 17-yard line and at now the 12-yard line on the two kickoffs. That's bad special teams play. You've got to get it to the 20 at least, or you might as well not even return the ball. Let it go in the end zone. Well, so far, they've done a good job of kicking the ball away from Jerry Parrish, who is one of the great breakaway threats in this league, along with Clarence Verdan. Raleigh Dutch talked about the directional kicking of Orlando. Obviously, he's got Mr. Miller doing that for him. Jeff Smith has checked into the game. Three wide receivers now for the Orlando. Orlando Renegades, first and 10 from the 13-yard line. Collier's got his tight end, and he drops the football. Bob Mazzola, 50-year man from Colorado, 6'5 and 260, just couldn't hang on to it. That time, we saw a three-wide receiver, one setback offensive alignment. So Collier shedding tacklers yes. as he goes. He's such a great athlete that he can shake people off, still get the ball off. This time Smith and Walters come to the near side. Flowers split to the top on second down and two. Draw play, they give it to Crump. Crump is across the 15, up to the 17-yard line where Jackie Klein, number 98, third-year player out of the University of Alabama. And I'll tell you, that's one of the great things about the territorial draft is that the Stallions get all those players from Auburn and Bama. They got a few from Penn State, too. I think that's the reason Paul Odd Peru signed with Birmingham. Uh, he was going to get married, marry a Birmingham girl, so he stayed right here to play for the Stallions instead of going to the NFL draft. Yeah, he was the leading rusher for the Crimson yes. Tide last year. Matter of fact, three rookies seen a lot of playing time for Birmingham. Orlando, third and five from the 18-yard line. Out of the shotgun is Reggie Collier. A lot of pressure. Got a hold of him. Doug Smith, 97, another rookie from Auburn, 6'5", and somewhere between 270 and 305 with his fourth sack of the year. Dolly Dodge told us when he came to camp the first day, he weighed 305 or so pounds. Now he's down below 170, 270, I mean, and he's become a lot better athlete, and he's learning day by day. There's a great job of getting a handful of jersey of a pretty good athlete. That man is Curtis Bledsoe, out with a bad ankle, and he's accounted for 877 yards offense this year. So he's either run it by the pass, and he is sorely missed tonight. Absolutely. No threat to run the football. They know you're going to throw it, and they're going to be all over Reggie Collier all evening, and we've seen it so far, except on the turnover drive. First and 10 now for Birmingham. Ball right at midfield, 12.06 to go. First half, Stallions lead at 10-7. Touchdown pass, 
Jones' sixth touchdown reception of the year and touchdown pass 28 for Cliff Stack. I told you he was the speed receiver. Smith runs the patterns and Joey Jones stretches the defenses. You don't ask a receiver to make this catch very often, but look at that, oh, right on the fingertip. Beautiful. Bounces into the end zone. Uh, that's what they pay him to do, and I'll bet he loves it. Point after by Miller. It's good. And here come the Birmingham Stallions. 11.54 to go. First half of Legion Field. Birmingham 17, Orlando 7. and they're trying to keep it away from him. He averages over 22 yards a kickoff return. He's brought two back for touchdowns. This is a very, very high one, and Crump's going to get it again. But he is nailed at the 28-yard line, gets up to the 30-yard line. Down on the coverage for the Birmingham Stallions, number 23, Earl Gant, backup running back. So Raleigh Dotch, who was concerned about the special teams play of Orlando, has really gotten some outstanding special teams play from his guys, as Orlando will take it first and 10 from the 31-yard line. Raleigh Dotch comes from special team country, Pittsburgh. Yes. Well, Collier's got his work cut out for him now. 17-7. Down by 10, lone setback is Crump. Double tight end alignment, two wide outs to the far side. He's going deep, he's got Walters wide open. Couldn't come up with the football. And Corso on his knees in anguish because Walters, who's been nursing a bad ankle, got deep, he got open, but Collier might have thrown it to the wrong side. He also underthrew him too. And this is one thing about a young quarterback. The veterans don't miss him when you got him by five yards. Look how wide open. Yes, he threw it over the wrong shoulder. Walters made a great adjustment, but watch where the ball went. Just a little bit short. I think it was more he threw it to the wrong side than short. So Walter's ankle looks to be in pretty good shape. He didn't practice at all this past week. Sometimes that'll make a player play better when you don't have to practice at all, right? I tried that every week. We all did. Up the middle is Perry. He's got a first down across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Excuse me, make it Ricky Clatt. Clatt, number 35, who's taking the place of Perry. So Corso tried some different combinations at running back. He started the game with Crump and Leon Perry because Bledsoe tried it before the game and couldn't do it. And now they'll switch him again as Clatt comes out. Coming into the game, Clatt had picked up just 85 yards on 30 carries. And it's a first down, first and 10 from the 42 yard. Crump's a lone setback. He'll get the football. He's got nowhere to go. Well, he made a little something out of nothing, that's for sure. Herb Spencer, 55, a very active linebacker. 81 tackles, four and a half sacks, five interceptions on the year. And a penalty marker down. Holding, offense, number 84. Holding was on Jackie Flowers. So Flowers has been called for a clip. He's been called for a hold. And he's going to argue about it now. Wide receivers aren't supposed to get those kind of calls. They pay him to run away from people, not into them. There's Jackie Flowers. You saw Fulton leave the game earlier, and he will probably not be back tonight. Taking his place now is Mark Fisher, second-year man from Notre Dame. First down and 18. Ball back at 34. Collier on the run. He's got a receiver. Drops the football. Flowers had it, and they're going to call it incomplete. But nothing's going right for Jackie Flowers right now. When you make two mental errors like he did, uh, the clip in the back and the previous penalty here, you start thinking about those and forget about the concentration that it takes to catch the football, and that's what happened there. That was a very catchable ball. Collier just one of four for seven yards, and now they've had two very catchable balls here on this possession. Haven't been able to come up with it. Second down at 18. Collier's got four wide receivers right now the shotgun. Crump, the lone back next to him. And they're going to give it to Crump. 
He's got a hole up the middle. Trump across the 45 to the 48 yard line. Nice play right there and some good blocking up front. Trump, who played with the Boston Breakers at one time, is tackled by David Dumar. Matter of fact, rushed for over 1,000 yards with the Breakers. This is a good play on second down 18. You go into the shotgun the first time you've seen it tonight. Good block by Dornbrook. Excellent block by Dornbrook. And the first time you've seen the shotgun, you expect him to throw. Watch Dornbrook. Bang. Excellent block. And that's what gives Crump the extra yard. Even though he did not knock Bill Rowe down, he kept him busy enough for Crump to get by and pick up that yardage. And now they've got a third down and a three situation. The Renegades just 30% in third down situations. Oh, Collier's got room. He cuts it up, and he's got the first down. Collier has the first down. David Dumars, who's made over 50 tackles from that strong safety position, comes up to stop him. Over the last five or six weeks, we've seen Collier about four times, and he did not run the football. He didn't run it in New Jersey when you and I did the game. Two weeks ago when they played San Antonio, he didn't run the ball at all. Tonight, he's been more active running the football than I've seen him in the last four or five weeks. Here's a look at... Uh, David Dumars a moment ago, and Collier bringing his team back out. Wholesale substitutions for Lee Corso on offense as Perry checks into the game, number 30. Leon Perry. Flowers was split to the near side. Walters at the top of your screen, and they take a look at the defense. And I'll tell you what, Raleigh Dodge is throwing it. Nickel dime quarter packages, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents. He's got all different defensive packages. Roger Twybell, Mike Hafter back with you. First and 10 now for Orlando, 47-yard line of Birmingham. Collier, pump fake, trying to find Flowers, couldn't get a handle on it. At the 37-yard line. Klein giving some pressure. There's no question on the Birmingham defense as to what Reggie Collier and the Renegades are doing right now. And Raleigh Dodge told us today about the different alignments he was going to throw to mix things up for Collier. He said he'd have four down linemen, three down linemen, and two down linemen. When he has two down linemen, he'll have five linebackers. When he has three down linemen, he says sometimes he'll have six defensive backs in. So we'll see a lot of looks. Four down linemen right now on second down and ten at the 47-yard line. Out of the shotgun once again. And once in a great while to work, Dave Purifor, the 13-year veteran from Eastern Michigan, spent a long time with the Packers, makes a tackle. He's got his master's degree. You don't run that drop play on the uh, veterans very often. With once, master's degrees. Yes, absolutely with master's degree. We're not all big dumb football players. Once in a while, if you get a pitch Oh, that's right. Hafner's got his, too. <laughs> we'll throw that in there. Third down and ten. At the 47, four wide receivers. They ran out of this formation the last time they had the four wide outs. They're going to throw it this time. They're going to try to throw it. Ball's loose. Interception. Mickey Sutton, number 25, second-year man from Montana, with his first interception of the year off the deflection. And Birmingham in great field position. Trying to set up a screen pass. He's run the draw once. Now he's trying to set up the screen pass. And you'll see Clay get up off the ground. It hits him right square between the eyes. Bounces up in the air and Sutton gets it. And there's not much that Reggie Collier can do about that. Herb Spencer was right in his face. Yes. And Mickey Sutton, his first interception of the year. Right off, right off Clayton's nose. Though. Birmingham has it first and ten from the 23-yard line of Orlando. Coles inside the 15. Joel Coles averaging over five yards a carry. And that'll be a first down for the Birmingham Stallions. Coles, who has now emerged, is that other back along with Joe Cribbs. They've shuffled a lot of people around in there. We've seen Paul Ott Carruth. We've seen Earl Gant. First and 10, balls at the 12-yard line. Of course, Leon Perry was with this team earlier. Blitz coming in. Scout lets it go. Touchdown, Smith. 
they call it no touchdown. They call it no touchdown. It appeared as though Smith had the football as he went down, and it was stripped away after he hit the turf. Victor Jackson applying a lot of pressure to Cliff Stout that time. Let's take a look at it now. A lot of pressure. Victor Jackson blitzing in, got a hand up. Stout right on the money. Smith right there. It looks like he has the football. Roger, I've got a feeling that what happened, the ball, as soon as it hit the ground, popped it out of his hand. So he had it for a second, but you got to have control, and he did. Cribs, he's got some room. Penalty marker down. Cribs tripped up at the five-yard line on a great play. Ike Griffin was the man that tripped him up. Buddy Idolette was out throwing the block, and Griffin came out of nowhere to catch him. But a penalty marker down on the play. Offside, defense number 56. Offsides was against Ron Freeman. One more time on the pass play. Here's, here's the key. But does he have possession long enough? Got it right there in his hands. Okay, watch Pulls the elbow. Right there underneath. And it was slipping out though, Roger. Okay. Didn't have enough control of the ball. Yeah, it was hard to tell because the shoulder comes down on it. Tough call. Though. Smith didn't argue it. No. Raleigh Dotch didn't argue it. Hey, but the way that things have been going on the replays, you might want to try it because Dick Corey had a great night with the replays yes. for, <laughs> two for two for two Saturday night. Is that, a, is that a world's record in the USFL, two for two? There's a man that got to 1,000 yards in reception before any of the run and shoot receivers did this year. And that shocked a lot of people, a lot of the experts. Second down and five. Smith to the near side, Jones to the far side. 5.57 to go first half, the blitz coming again, it's picked up, pass to Smith, touchdown this time. And once again, Victor Jackson was on the blitz, and we'll take a look and see if number 20 was blocking it. Touchdown pass. I don't even have to look, I know it was Joe Cribbs who made the block. Third TD pass of the night. Here's a look, Coles. No, it was Coles, you're right. And you only go to the veteran twice. He'll make sure that he gets it 50% of the time. That was an easy catch and a great throw by Cliff Stout. That's the fade route. And Jim Smith runs it as well as any receiver in football. And he leads the USFL with 15 touchdown receptions. Miller, the point after. And with 5.52 to go in the first half, the Birmingham Stallions have moved out to a 24-7 lead over the Orlando Renegades. Jim Smith and Cliff Stout, that is some sort of combination. And Stout now with 29 touchdown passes on the year. Let me explain again what the fade route is. You don't have to throw it over one certain shoulder and take a look at Coles picking up the blitz here. Victor Jackson, 20. And I'll tell you what, you don't like running into a 6'4", 235-pound pullback when you're running the blitz. Now, here's the fade route. You can either throw it out over the outside shoulder or the inside shoulder, depending upon the read of the quarterback, and it's up to the receiver to run to the ball. And Jim Smith and his veteran, he knows exactly what to do, and Stout throws it well. Albert Gray was the man beaten. And Stout and Smith, the Pittsburgh connection, along with Raleigh Dotch. First down for Orlando. In a strange situation, Mike, because they have led Baltimore and San Antonio the last two weeks in the first half. It's been the second half they have problems, primarily the third quarter. Well, they have run into a hot offensive club, though, in Club. Little or nothing. He has really stacked up. And Spencer, 55, was the lead tackler there. He had some help. There was more than one white jersey in on that play for the Birmingham Stallions. They're slow untangling. And also down on the uh, bottom of the pile was Doug Smith, number 97. He is one of three rookies who's seen a considerable amount of playing time. I think the Stallions of all the USFL teams went out and signed three pretty good football players, Smith and McFadden, just to name a couple. Both contributing mightily to this team. Second and nine. Oh, lots of trouble there. And he just kind of fell down. Ken Kelly was the closest man to him. Another one of those Penn State linebackers. So credit him with a sack. That'll be his third and a half this year. Reggie Collier wanted to get rid of it quick. And now watch Kelly. He's right on top of him. Nobody blocks him. Sometimes I think quarterbacks with great, great athletic ability get themselves into more trouble trying to get out of trouble. 
Sometimes it pays to be slow of foot yes. and fast of mind. And you can kind of sit back in there and look things over. Reggie Collier is extremely quick. He is learning every week. As a matter of fact, Lee Corso told us that last week, for the first time, he actually looked downfield the receivers without looking at the back of his offensive lineman first. It's a learning process. Tentative receiver was Jeff Smith. Got his hands on it, couldn't pull it in. It was way short of first down territory anyway. And so, Cater, who's been a busy man, will come back in to punt the football. And with 2.27 left to go in the half, Stallions have another good opportunity to get on the board. Pressure on Smith here. He knows that he's way short of the first down. And I've got a feeling he tried to turn and run before he knew he had the ball. Because he's the kind of receiver that makes that catch. Cater standing at the 20-yard line. McFadden back at the 27 for Birmingham. high kick again. Fair catch ball by McFadden. That's a 20. So, with 2.19 to go on the half, the Birmingham Stallions with all three of their timeouts. Mike Kelly threw six interceptions. They had two touchdowns and five. Bizarre. Is that the word well, you used? Stranger than fiction. Coles. Spin move gets him across the 20 to the 22. And that will be the two-minute warning here from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Second and eight, 23-yard line. Foot stout. He's got Smith. Across the 40, across the 45 to the 47-yard line. And they'll hurry things up right now. There is an Orlando player down on the field. Victor Jackson was the man that made the tackle as Smith ran the sideline route. He saw that the defenders were off a bit. Mike is a smart veteran. Turned back the inside, got about 12 extra yards. Ran the comeback route, and you give Stout that kind of time. And uh, Jim Smith will find a way to get open, and also, being a veteran that he is, will find some extra yardage, too. Lupe Sanchez, the man down. Second year from UCLA. All three timeouts remaining for the Stallions. 149, plenty of time to add on to that lead. And uh, the Orlando Renegades, who are rather thin when it comes to personnel, have seen Fulton have to leave the game and Sanchez being helped off the field. The one thing I guess 44 will be his replacement. The one thing that Lee Corso fears is, one, injury, because he's got no people to back him up, and two, when you get tired in that third and fourth quarter, when somebody needs a blow so they can catch their breath, there isn't anybody to turn around and pick up, send out on the field. Lupe Sanchez, outstanding player, over 66 tackles, four fumble recoveries, and an interception this year. just been informed that Joe Cripps has a slight hyperextension of the right knee, but he should be back. There are the numbers on Stout. Three touchdowns. He had five last week. That tied a league record, which he held previously with several other players. Game against Oakland last year. First and ten from the 47. Joey Jones has got it at the 35. And he's tripped up at the 32-yard line. Jeff George, number 43, the left cornerback from Illinois State, makes the tackle. And here come the Stallions with plenty of time and three timeouts. That crossing pattern in the two-minute drill. They're playing zone deep. The linebackers are trying to get back. It's a great throw. Stout's got to move around a bit. He's got some running room. He's inside the 25. Stout pitches it back to Smith. A little razzle-dazzle by the Stallions. Smith cuts to the outside. Smith's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Birmingham. Jim Smith. Well, they can't divide it up. Smith gets his third touchdown of the night. All we needed was the Stanford band on that one. That's, right? You're absolutely right. Look at the smile on Cliff Stout. Is he having fun tonight? 
hey, when you're, you're beating people like they did against the Express when he had five touchdown passes, he's got three TD passes tonight, a lateral for a touchdown, as Miller puts it through, and the Stallions take a 31-7 lead with 121 left to go. Uh, this is this is what's fun in football. This is like draw it in the dirt, That's even right. though it was a set play. But this shows you the athletic ability of Stout. Stout, first of all, will get credit to the point where he lateraled it. Now watch this. First of all, he didn't want to get down because it hurts, and we're in the two-minute drill. So he flips it back to Smith, and Smith makes what we call a great athletic move. Breaks a tackle there, then a great move to the outside, and I'm sure he's got a smile on his face as he passes the five and then the goal line. Watch the end of it. Go the other way. Go the other way. Come back. Help out your quarterback. Should I make a block for him? Now I'll just take the lateral, and then we'll have some fun. First rushing touchdown for Jim Smith this year. Maybe his last. Too. Might be his last. He's got 15 touchdown receptions on the year. And one rushing. Oh, mercy. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't it great? Smith again. Ruling. He has a hit put on him by number 21, Dennis Woodbury, that you can hear all the way upstairs. Eight-yard pickup. They say he got out of bounds. The clock stops with 52 seconds left to go in the half. That's the price you pay as a wide receiver. You expose yourself reaching to get out of bounds. Plus, he owed, he owed Richard Collier, Collier one for dropping one. Sideline again. Flowers. Penalty marker down in the second. Pass is incomplete. Woodbury, 21, out of Southern Arkansas. 5'11", 186 in his second year. Was on the coverage, but a penalty marker is down. Number 22, first down. Holding against David oh. Dumars, the veteran from Northeast Louisiana. Spent some time at Denver, was a free agent, picked up by Birmingham. Went in and asked for the big money in Denver. Look at this hit now by Woodbury. If you can't cover the man, make him pay for the catch. Next time he'll remember you, and I think Flowers is still remembering him from a couple of hits before. Collier. Now, there was some serious communication problems there, folks, because Wilfred Morgan was supposed to be running the fly pattern, and uh, he turned it to the sideline uh, about 15 yards down. I think uh, David Evans also did a heck of a job of covering him. Wouldn't let him get deep and pushed him almost out of bounds. Collier wants to know uh, what Morgan was doing on that play. Reggie Collier, who you know, in his last two games passed almost 500 yards, mm -hmm. has had a struggle tonight with the top defense in the United States football. League. There's the key line, as he should. I mean, they are a very, very good defensive team. They're airing it out this time. He's got Joey Walters. Touchdown! Threw it over the wrong shoulder again this time. Walters expected it and adjusted. Joey Walters, third touchdown reception of the year. 36 yards on the hookup from Reggie Collier to Joey Walters. And for Reggie Collier, his seventh touchdown pass of the season. I know Joey Walters has been limping, trying to fool all those defensive backs, and all of a sudden, he gets it together and sneaks behind it. Well, maybe we'll see a change of things for Orlando this week. They have been a team that have been able to get out, get a lead early on, but have struggled in the second half. Maybe we'll see if they can come from behind, change their third quarter luck, where they've been outscored some 66 to nothing in the last five games, says Brockhouse. Extra point is good. The Birmingham Stallions lead the Orlando Renegades at halftime. 31-14 from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. And there you'll notice that uh, passing yards 149 for Birmingham, rushing yards 112. Give them about a 110-yard advantage right on the nose. And uh, turnovers just one apiece. And again, we talked about the missing link on offense for the Orlando Renegades, and that's been the difference today. Curtis Bledsoe. Curtis Bledsoe. You look, the first possession, the fumble to turnover, led to the Orlando score, and then the last possession of the half, in between, they did great. Yes, five times with the football, five times they scored. Now it was five touchdowns against L.A. Here they stuck a field goal in with four touchdowns out of the five possessions, but the Birmingham offense has really gotten it together for the last part of the season.
We get set, kick it off, Danny Miller. Number one for the Birmingham Stallions. Crump juggles it, gets a hold of it, takes it up the middle, and across the 15 to the 16 yard line, where number 31, Ted Walton, the fifth year player out of the University of Connecticut, makes a tackle. That time, they tried to kick it away from Parrish, and they did. But Krupp came up with it, and a quarterback change for the Orlando Renegades as Jerry Goldstein checks into the game. Now, would you imagine that there was an injury? We didn't hear about one. Maybe with the 31 to 14 lead, he wants Goldstein to get some time at quarterback. It's the only reason I can think of it. There's a look at his numbers on the air, and earlier this season at New Jersey, we saw Goldstein momentarily broke his hand in that game, his left hand. Just underway, second half action. Walters, interception, interception by Chuck Clanton, number 14 on the year. He's still on his feet. He spins inside the 15 to the 13-yard line, and Goldstein's very first pass intended for Joey Walters, intercepted, and Collier looks on. I mean, this is no way to start off your first play at quarterback after making the change. And who else but Chuck Clanton picks it off? The leading interceptor in the USFL has broken the record. Uh, he broke it last week of 12. Now he's got his 14th there. Once again, Walters, Walters wide open. Was, well, he was open, but he was looking both ways. There seemed to be some confusion either on his part or Goldstein about which way he was going to go once he was downfield. Didn't we see this at the start of the game? A turnover Tables. right away. Swings it out. Oh, what a hit there. Daryl Mason, the tight end, gets it down to about the six-yard line, but he paid the price big time. Mason on a little trick play. Our information from the Orlando sideline is that Lee Corso just decided to make a change. There was nothing wrong with Reggie Collier. And I would have to assume after the touchdown pass at the end of the first half, uh, hey, a little momentum going to go. Corso's going to talk to him right now. We talked to him, and he said, I won't have a, long, a short hook on him. And here he yanked him out of the game. Second down at two. Stout. He's just going to try to throw it away. Jones has got a touchdown. Goodness sakes, the pass was deflected. And four touchdown passes on the night for Cliff Stout, his second to Joey Jones. There is a penalty marker down. And it looked as though he had nowhere to go. He couldn't run with it. He was just going to try to the throw it out of the end zone. Back. And they're going to bring it back. You know what, though, Roger? When you're hot on offense, when you do what you did to Los Angeles the week before, when you put 31 points on the board in the first half, things just tend to keep getting better and better and better. No matter what you do, you come out smelling like a rose. Holding call on the Birmingham Stallions. That'll make it now second down and 12 as they move the ball back to the 16-yard line. Just gives them a little more room to operate. Smith split to the near side. Jones at the top of the screen. Call out Carruth in the backfield. Handoff inside. And that was Joel Coles. Remember, just before the half, Cribs with a little hyper extension. Cribs with a little hyper extension. So Paul Ott Carruth is checked into the backfield. And Cliff Stout will now be faced with a third down situation. And Ken Toller will check into the game. And that means three wide receivers. What you want to do with three wide receivers is get one of them one-on-one, -on -one, and preferably Jim Smith, number 86, one-on-one, -on -one, because he hasn't been covered tonight. Most of his career, nobody's covered him one-on-one. -on -one. And a timeout being called. Saw Daryl Mason lined up in the backfield that time, the tight end. Roger Twybell, Mike Hafner back with you at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Hope you've had a great Memorial Day weekend. We've had an exciting offensive show by the Birmingham Stallions tonight and Cliff Stout. And they've got it right now, third down and 12 at the 15-yard line of Orlando after the 14th interception of the year by Chuck Clanton. 
It's a new league record. He beats the league, and he's got a few games left to go this year. David Dumars, the addition this year. The great pressure from Smith up front, and uh, Clinton's taking advantage. All the overthrows have been coming to him. Three wide receivers. Stout to Jones. He's got it at the six-yard line. He's on his feet, gets into the end zone. They're going to mark it down at the six. That'll be short of the first down. And now Raleigh Dutch will have a decision to make. And he's made it. They're going to kick the field goal, leading 31-14. Do not come away from this opening drive of the second half and uh, without any points. And that's why he's going for the field goal. And so Dan Miller will come in and set it down at the 14-yard line out of the hold of Bobby Lane, make it a 24-yard attempt. He is three out of four from 20 to 29 yards this year. And word is that Joe Cribbs is having his knee iced down in the locker room. And the kick is up, and it's good. So Miller, two out of two tonight. And the Birmingham Stallions increase their lead to 20, 34-14. Corso is not going to take the penalty because the offensive unit for Orlando has come out on the field. And I'll explain the rule for you. Well, first the referee will do it for us. And his microphone's not working. But here's the rule. If they kick it out of bounds, you can either take the five-yard penalty and make him kick it over, or you can take it at the 30-yard line. And Jerry Goldstein comes out for the second possession. The first time he touched the ball in the second half, he threw an interception. I don't like this, Roger. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. This time he goes short to Crump. Crump got a block, and he gets a first down across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Tom Dornbrook was the man who pulled out on the left side and got him some space before Chuck Clinton makes the tackle. He still don't like it. No. I mean, you're going to build with Reggie Collier, quarterback. He's going to remember this for the next three or four weeks. Goldstein's nothing but a backup quarterback, and he's been that his whole career. And he's not going to change this game around, and we saw that graphically on the opener when he throws the interception. A lot of people question Corso starting the season with Goldstein rather than Collier. First and 10, 34-14. Birmingham with the lead. This is Leon Perry. He's tripped up inside. He doesn't get much at all. Malcolm Taylor, one of the men there. Herb Spencer also in on the tackle. And Mike Perko. And you saw Reggie Collier on the sideline. And I know his mother is here tonight watching the game. I'm sure he's got a lot of his family here. And uh, That's how tough. do you feel? You've been pulled out of games before, haven't you? You feel rotten, let me tell you. Your stomach starts churning. You start questioning your own ability. I don't know how it feels. I never got into games in the first place. Huh? <laughs> Second and eight. And some movement on the offensive line. It looked like Dornbrook. And I'll tell you what, that might be a record. There are four yellow flags down. So every one of those Ball officials. Start. Offense, number 63. Still second down. Well, I got lucky, huh? <laughs> There's Dornbrook, fourth-year man from Kentucky. One for Twy, Bill. You know about those linemen who jump. Is that why you were on the bench so often? Hey, I was on roller skates so much, it was unbelievable. <laughs> I was just trying to get out of the way. There's a lookout block. Huh? Look out, son. Here he comes. Durger, Dornbrook, Fisher, Patton, and Moransky. The offensive line, and I'll tell you what, they've got a tough job because Birmingham just teeing off because they know they've got to pass the football. Down by 20 with 934 to go third quarter. And now Birmingham checks off. Goldstein will move up in the pocket, throw it downfield that is incomplete. And it looked like Dave Purifor. Wait, but there's a flag on the play. It was beautiful. Outside, defense, number 75, second down. There is the guilty party, 13th year. The thing that amazes me about this man, 6'1 and 255, and when you're 6'1, you're not supposed to be able to play defensive end in professional football. Nowadays you can, though, with the change of the rules so that the offensive linemen can extend their hands, the most important thing for a defensive lineman, especially an outside defensive lineman, is speed. And that's one thing that Purifoy's had all of his career. You can't coach it, and now that you need him, he's got it. Second down and eight. Ball 
the 42-yard line. Inside is Ricky Clack. He gets to the 45, but Jackie Klein is right there. And Herb Spencer also in on the tackle. The number one defensive unit in the United States Football League, averaging just over 17 points and just 260-some yards in total offense to the opposition. Herb Spencer, he's moving the pile. That's what you're supposed to be as a linebacker, a little smack to the head just to remind him that he's in the game. This is a very active linebacking core. Spencer, four and a half sacks. Rowe, five and a half sacks. And Kelly, two and a half sacks. And when you're up 34 to 14, you can do lots of fun things. 35, beautiful defensive play. Penalty marker is down. 22, David Dumars knocked down the ball, which is intended for Don Eccles. Penalty's going to be against Birmingham, and it's going to be roughing the passer on Malcolm Taylor. Malcolm Taylor, number 70, taking the outside pass rush at the top of your screen. Watch him. Head right square to the sternum. Now, Goldston got his hand broken against New Jersey on that same kind of play. <laughs> number 75, Boy, dear, innocent, dear too. innocent until proven guilty. Right. Malcolm's going to go get his attorney on this one. I, I think he wants to argue this thing. Let's go to court. Yeah. I want to carry him my peer. First and ten. Ball at the 40-yard line of Birmingham. Eccles, the reception. Eccles, the first down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line where Mickey Sutton makes the tackle. Also over there, David Evans for the Birmingham Stallions. So let's give this quarterback switch of Lee Corso a little time. Goldstein came in through the interception. Birmingham got the field goal out of it. Goldstein starting to move him on this drive. He better get in the end zone here. Or I'm still going to be upset because he threw the interception right off the bat. Walters, one of the wide receivers, he splits to the far side. Jerry Parrish, the other one. Seven and a half to go, third quarter. bringing a lot of people. Goldstein gets it away and Parrish makes the catch at the 15-yard line. And what a grab right there by Jerry Parrish. And he's still on the ground. He grabbed his left leg, the back of his left leg. Parrish with a good, good catch. Let's take a look at it here. I think what he did is he fell on the ball after he made the catch. I think it was tipped too. Now he falls right on top of it, Roger. And I think it knocked the wind out of him or at least bent the ribs a tad. That's John Hopkins in Syracuse in the NCAA Lacrosse Championship and PK Karate coming up tomorrow night right here on ESPN. Clock running just over seven minutes to go third quarter and the Renegades moving downfield. They've got it first and ten at the 15 with Jerry Goldstein with the controls. Trump and Clack, the running backs. Trump with some room down to the nine-yard line. Six-yard pickup for Ricky Klatt. Tight ends are paid to block and catch the ball, too. Watch 88, Beckles. First on the down block, and then he turns outside on row, and he's the one that got Crump the extra yard. There's a good look at Richard Crump. Second and four, six-yard pickup. up again right up the middle just driving ahead got him a couple and it'll be a third down situation tough work on the inside and the middle linebacker plugging the holes bill Rowe. you got to keep people off your legs so you take people on the shoulder and uh, he took a shot right there and then got twisted backwards a lot of substitutions coming in now. Perry checks into the game. Zolik checks in. And Reggie Collier checks into the game. And Goldstein comes out on a third down and two. The ball at the seven-yard line. I want to get inside Lee Corso's head and find out what in the world he's doing here. I know what he wants here. He wants a rollout pass, so he got the option run. So oh, this looks like an old Kansas City Chiefs formation. Walters, motion, Collier fumbles the football. And what do you expect? He's been sitting on the bench. Penalty marker goes down, and that's 
probably going to be against Collier. I don't blame him. The official was trying to get the ball from him. He threw it down in disgust. Delay a game. Spiking the ball with the clock running. Offense number 10. I don't blame him for being frustrated. He sat on the bench the whole time. He got yanked. They sent him in for one play. He's cold. Would you call this a bit of overcoaching? Yes. Perfect description. Goldstein has just moved the ball down the field. Pretty good shape. Now, you know what he wants to do. Collier's a running quarterback. But they're in a formation they haven't been in all night. That's right. And Brockhouse will come on to attempt the field goal. They will put the ball down at the 24-yard line. 34-yard attempts. Brockhouse, four out of six from the 30 to the 39. Kick is up. Good. So they got something out. They didn't come away dry. Second down, one yard to go. 237 left. Third quarter. Coles right up the middle. He's got enough for first down. Mike Griffin, 65, the man on the tackle. Griffin now saying, I got to come out of the game. You've seen Buddy Idolet pull all day. Here, he needs a straight on block. He gets McElhaney, and just enough. It was, he didn't win the war, but it was even. Just hooked Cole. him enough, yeah, huh? just, <laughs> just hooked him enough on the takedown. He got the takedown, three points, and just enough for the first down, too. Well, you don't know how tough that is to do that. Oh, I don't care how big you are. You got a guy that's 260, 70, 280 coming at you. You stand him up, and then push him back. That's strength. Mm -hmm. 156, left to go in the third. First down, through spins to the 48-yard line. Ruth is a slashing type of runner, cutback runner. He has a great sense of the blocking schemes. He's a bright young man, and he knows when to cut it back. He also knows his limitations. He knows he doesn't have the great speed, so he's going to take other advantages to get by. Well, they've had some great running backs at the University of Alabama, and Ruth is one of the three rookies that's seen a lot of playing time. coverage on him too. Now when you stop a great receiver like Jim Smith, although he's not known for his deep routes, my guess coming over. I'm an old wide receiver and I might call a little bump in there. But but uncatchable football. And that's the reason there's no call. You thought about being a receiver? No. <laughs> I blew him. I blew him. <laughs> of course they're still pacing on the sideline. That's one thing that's consistent with Orlando. Of course, they're on the sideline. Third down and eight. 106 left to go in the third. Three wide receivers. South got Joey Jones. First down. At the 42-yard line. Albert Gray was the man on the coverage, but another first down for the Birmingham South. An outstanding combination pattern here between Jim Smith, who's going to run the crossing pattern. Jones fakes the up pattern, then comes back inside. South gets him perfect, and Jones does the right thing. He knows where the first down stakes are, and he gets it. Not a bad night for the little guy. Yeah, good night. Caught a lot of football from Walter Lewis at the University of Alabama. I've still got goosebumps from the touchdown he caught Diver. First and 10, 41 yard line of Orlando. Drop away. That was Gant. Earl Gant, fifth year man from Missouri. He just checked into the game. Of course, it's ripped out. Gant's going to see some playing time tonight. Carruth and Coles are the running backs as the clock winds down and we'll end the third quarter of play from Legion Field. For the final 15 minutes from Birmingham, Alabama, I'm Roger Twybo, along with Mike Hafter, 34-17. The Stallions lead the Renegades, second down and nine. The ball to the 40-yard line of Orlando, and you go up top on this one? Absolutely. Look for Smith or Jones. Sound like a TV series? Stout going back to 
across to Smith. He's got a first down inside the 30 to 28. They didn't go deep that time, but they got the first down, and that's 18 first downs on the night for the Birmingham Stallions. I realize it was alias Smith and Jones, but this is the real Jim Smith here, number 86, who runs the great routes. Look at the move. Thought he was going up, comes back inside, stout, hits him perfectly, and he gets the first down. I'll tell you what, James Stewart couldn't put the brakes on fast enough. <laughs> he had his fake. Come on, Stewart, you got to remember, Smith ain't got the speed he used to. He didn't go deep on it. But they set it up earlier with that long run. Two touchdown receptions. He also ran one in, first of 10 for the 28-yard line. Well, he's got Jones open in the end zone. He comes out, though, to Earl Gant. And Gant makes a fine catch. He goes out of bounds at the 12-yard line, but Joey Jones was wide open deep. And Earl Gant, University of Missouri, makes the reception. This is Coles. Coles down to the 6-yard line. They certainly like to run behind Buddy Idol that a lot. And he's an outstanding blocker. Runs the bowling move as well as anybody in the USFL. And a straight ahead blocks. At least he gets a stalemate. And that's all you need for a great back. Screen block. And then they can use their moves to get away. Earl Gant checks into the game. And Coles will come out. Gant the receiver. Coles the runner. Second down and four. Down at the six yard line. So the Stallions have scored, what, 48 last week? Yes. 34 so far tonight. 13-27 left to go, and they're looking for another TD right here. That's 82. Carruth inside. Call out Carruth. Touchdown, Birmingham. And they're in right over Buddy Idolat. Who else? Where to go. First touchdown of the year for Paul Rod Carruth. 78 on the trap block. Ooh, look at that Takes hole. Kevin Kellen just into next week. You and I could have gotten through that hole, right? I think we might have. Arm and arm, man. <laughs> I'd have with a great trap block on Kevin Kellen. And Carruth gets his first touchdown in a big hole. And his first professional TD. He's All the right. rookie out of Alabama. Miller to attempt a point after. Out of the hole to Bobby Lane. And it's good. And the Stallions lead the Renegades 41-17. This is a nice springy yes, artificial yes. surface. And that's why you got a true bounce on it. Watch this. Hot Kohler right was out. the guy that stripped it loose. Yes. And it bounces right straight back up into his hands and he gets another uh, 10, 12 yards. It's like a little bit of Australian rules football. Who's the quarterback? It's Reggie Collier. Unbelievable. Mr. Corso, where's your head tonight? 13.08 left to go. Stallions 41. Orlando 17. First and 10 from 32. And Reggie dumps it down the middle. Ricky Clack across the 40 to the 42 yard line. And Herb Spencer from Newberry College makes the tackle. Bob Lane taking a few throws in the sideline. He is the backup quarterback to Cliff Staff. Third Germant, Northeast Louisiana State. Few quarterbacks out of the uh, Northeast, Southwest Louisiana, etc. Great quarterback name, isn't it? Yeah, if you wanted to be a quarterback, Bobby Lane wouldn't hurt you as a name. First and 10, 43 yard line. Three wide receivers. roll but if you're going to roll out wide to the blind side when you're a right-handed thrower don't stop because there's nine guys chasing you and if you stop they're going to catch up with you and that's exactly what happened they got rid of it just barely third and nine
who was there, Chuck Clint. Almost had his 15. Well, Reggie Collier just trying to make something happen yeah. here. And, and he throws a silly pass. First of all, Smith was slowing down. Clanton had a perfect shot at it. I think Smith got his hand in, kept him from getting his 15th interception. Cater, one of the better punters, trailing Stan Talley, second in the United States Football League, first in the East. Thad McFadden, the rookie from Wisconsin, back deep at the 15-yard line. Boy, I'll tell you what, Cater gets it up in the air. McFadden at the 10, and the fair catch. There's Cliff Stout, three touchdown passes on the night. Jim Smith, who caught two of those. Boy, another solid night for Cliff Stout. Eight touchdown passes in the last two. He's got game. 55 in his career right now and only 21 interceptions. There's only one other quarterback in the USFL who's got that 30. Three to one ratio, that's yeah. Jim Kelly. Carew. Up to the 33-yard line, Paul Ott Carruth. The clock now winding down, 9.40 left to go in this game. What a nice seven-minute drive here. Raleigh said, keep possession of the football for me, guys. And Jim Smith, the all-time leading receiver in the United States Football League on the night, two touchdown receptions, plus he ran one in on a lateral from Cliff Stout. So three touchdowns for Jim Smith on the night, and it's second and five from the 34-yard line. Offensive coordinator's got to be happy. Coles, oh, what a block Coles got. Coles across the 40 to the 44-yard line. It was Pat Sandin. 274, the strongest man on the team out of Vanderbilt, and the career receiving leaders, you've got two of them here tonight, folks, Jim Smith of Birmingham and Joey Walters of Orlando, and it was Jim Smith's night, no question about that, but I think the exciting catch of the night, and maybe one of the year, to Joey Jones. Joey Jones' catch will be on all the USFL highlights this week, and probably the highlight film of the year. Lane. He's got Earl at the 40. Robin Earl down to the 36-yard line. A big tight end out of the University of Washington in his eighth year. And another first down. Bob Lane, the new quarterback. It's nice to get a big man like Robin Earl open in his own defense. You make the great throw. Earl, I remember at Washington. Boy, I like the way Lane bounces. Yep. He's right on his toes. Right on his toes. I remember they tried to make Earl, he was a fullback in his career. Then they moved him to the tight end at the Bears. And I think now after eight years, he's finally figured out how to play tight end. First and 10 from the 36 yard line. Coles, what a hole on the left side. He's very close to a first down at the 27-yard line. And that very busy secondary, James Stewart, 34, of the Orlando Renegades, makes the tackle. Look at this left side. That's an outstanding job of blocking. When a big fullback doesn't even get touched when he goes through the line. Now, I, you know, a little back who makes lots of quick moves can get through without being touched. But you have to have great blocking for a guy as big as Joe Cole to get through the line without anybody even raising. Bill McKinley, 73, the left tackle. Turner is checked in at left guard. Tagley is the center. Second and one, the 27-yard line, 7-10 left to go. Carew, and he has tripped up on a fine tackle by 56, Ron Freeman. Who else? I'll tell you what, Freeman came into this game over 100 tackles, a couple of sacks, an interception. Now this isn't a blitz, this is a straight read. He knows it's the running play. He knows it's Carruth, plays off the blocker, sticks an arm out and dumps it. Mm -hmm. He's That's a tough drink right there, yeah, one-arm tackle. He's a tough middle line. Look at those arms. Like 30 out of <laughs> Third and one. Clock runner, 6.30, 41.17, Stallions lead it. And they'll go back to Carruth. He loses the football. Carruth loses the football, and Orlando comes up with it. 59, Harold Randolph. 59, Harold Randolph came up with it, and then he falls down. I don't know if he's... I don't know if he's just overjoyed that he got the, the fumble, or he's... he's 
in some obvious pain. I guess he might have fallen on top of the football. Let's take a look at it. Might have knocked the wind out of him. Because he took a couple of steps after he got the ball. Let's see who strips it loose. 58 right here. That's Bernard West. That's what he did. He fell right on top right of on the football and knocked the wind out of him. Second and 10. Dahlia sends it out to the front. At the 23-yard line. He doesn't get any. He loses a couple as a matter of fact. You know... This will be the third consecutive the big win over L.A. Had a tough battle here with Portland, one of 14 to nothing. If Orlando doesn't score against 17 points tonight, in their last four wins, if you go back a few more games, when they beat Tampa 30 to three, right? They will have allowed just 27 points in their last four wins. The two losses prior to these last two wins, they allowed 65 points to, to Memphis and the yeah. Memphis and Jacksonville, the two, two tough teams, teams where they gave up all those points, but they got through that after they beat Tampa, had the two tough games there, Portland, not one of the better teams, hard to get LA, up they got their offense together tonight, clicking on all cylinders. And you need to be, as Raleigh Doc said to us today, you need to be clicking when you've got Houston, Tampa Bay, and uh, New Jersey coming up all on the road. And then Baltimore at home, too, which, even though its record is poor, isn't that, isn't that bad? Cater, boy, once again, he just gets it so high. And fair catch at the 45-yard line. 17 Birmingham Forty-one seventeen. the score here Bob Lane the quarterback with 438 left to go ball carrier for the Birmingham Stallions Ted Sample number 37 he loses the football maybe Orlando said he did like one of those Texas death matches in pro wrestling. They're going to have 10 bodies on top of it. And they're going to give it to Orlando. McElhaney comes up with a fumble recovery. So the Stallions have fumbled the last couple of times they've had the football. Bobby Lane, first new carry for Ted sure. Sample. And a new quarterback. And Sample, oh, didn't quite get the football. It wasn't so much that uh, somebody hit him and knocked it out. A nice night for the Stallions. They lead it 41-17 with 4.15 to go. They fumbled the last two possessions, and Orlando has the football, and inside the 40, Jeff Smith comes up with the reception. You know, Smith's an interesting story. He started off at Cal Poly Pomona and transferred to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. You know why? No, tell me. They dropped the football at Cal Poly Pomona when Roman Gabriel's team got blown out 103-3 or okay, whatever the score I remember was. that now. And so he lost no eligibility, and he stayed in the Cal Poly system went up to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo where they had a great quarterback and was throwing the football a lot. What a beautiful little town that is too. It's a well kept secret, huh? Yes. Second and three. Golly. He's got Walters wide open. Has him at the nine yard line. Well, the question that's going to be asked by all the reporters after this game to Lee Corso is, why did you take Collier out to start the second half after he got you the touchdown at the end of the first half? And this is Clanton just playing little center field. Don't let him have six here. Don't embarrass the defense. Keep him in front of you, Chuck, and he did. First and goal for the nine yard. marker down now Walters caught the football I don't see the signal for the touchdown a couple of penalty markers down there was no signal somebody arguing well, now Joey Taylor. Walters offense number 17 Russell down second down Sneaky Joey tried to push his way in to be an open oh, he's pleading his case isn't he Walters is pleading his case sorry Joe Joey Walters, the veteran out of Clemson, ninth year, had one spectacular year in the Canadian Football League. Caught over 100 passes. One of the first receivers to ever do it. 
In Canada. In Canada. Yeah. Lionel Taylor did it long, way back in the dark ages of the Denver Broncos. Second and 19. Just thrown it up. Walters can't get it. And on his back is Reggie Collier because 57 Greg Durkin was all over him like a bad rash. Former Denver Gold player, Greg Durkin. Joey trying to make up for the uh, pass interference call that cost him the down and the touchdown. Get to it, Joe. And a temporary setback for Reggie Collier. Smith, beautiful catch down at the seven yard line. Oh, he just really shows you that outstretched arms and exposes his body. 57, Gherkin was right there to make the stuff. Look at this catch. You can relate to this, Mike. Yes, this is what they pay you to do. Make the great catch. Get the quarterback out of the tough situation. Look out. And he paid the price for that reception. I had to announce some games for some teams. <laughs> it's almost as bad being up here yes. as it is down there. I can feel, I can relate. Fourth and 12. Intercepted. Clanton nearly had another. Look at him. You'll see that one in his dream tonight. 15th it could have been. And a very strange night. Got to fight through the tough times if you're going to be a star quarterback. Sometimes you got to take some steps back. Birmingham with 200 yards and second time this year they've been a 200 or more. And their 34-19 win over Memphis. The only other time Paul Ruth. The 15 to the 10-yard line, and he's finally dragged down by Mike Guest, number 44. And I'll tell you what, even though it's late, even though there's nothing to it, because they've got a big lead, he's shown you something tonight. Yes, he has, and he's made this run a number of times on this carpet. Alabama played their home, some of their home games here, and Peruth knows how to cut back. That's not the great. You team. saw him. He tried to turn it on, and he, he outran himself. Oh, I mean, his stride got a little bit longer. He started falling down. You know what that was? That was the piano that climbed on his back at oh. about the nine. You know about that, don't you? Oh, yes. I've crawled in the end zone before when both both quads cramped well, up. This has been a tough year for Birmingham. You know, there was a point in time where they didn't know if the team would stay in business. Marvin Warner, their owner, had to depart because of financial difficulties. The city has come up with some money. Not a big crowd here tonight, about 20 or 25 dollars but very vocal as Joel Cole takes it inside the 10 down to about the 6 yard line and with 120 left these fans here tonight have seen their team move into first place in the Eastern Conference and this is how the playoff situation shapes up in the United States Football League at this moment these would be the teams in the playoffs Oakland, Birmingham, Denver, Tampa Bay Houston, New Jersey, Memphis and Jacksonville and there are a lot of Eastern teams in there the top two teams in the West and the East automatically get in, despite record. After that, it's the next four teams with the best record, and there are only one Western Conference team and three in the East. Peru, one more time, He's trying to go to the outside, can't do it. And clock running out with 38 seconds left to go. I wanted to give Paul Ott one more shot at getting in the end zone after those two runs. I like that name, Paul Ott Carruth. That's a good football name. They, they call him Paul Carruth. That public address announcer here shortens it up. But you got to have a two-first-name guy on every football team. Oh, you know, Billy Bob, Paul Ott, Ott yeah. Joe Don. And that's going to be it. The Birmingham Stallions behind Cliff Stout and Jim Smith. 41-17 over the Orlando Renegades.